Confessions of a YouTuber is the, uh, the video I'm doing. <laughs> All right. Okay, share the Legos, please. Okay, so really quickly, I'm going to try to get through this. How long have I been on YouTube? Uh, I've been on YouTube for since 2007, but I didn't start making videos until, sorry, I'm going to step over my cord here, and then, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, 2007 is when I started my channel, but I didn't start making videos technically until 2009, and those weren't even vlogs. Those were just uh, videos I made for the Fiesta Movement where I made like clip documentary type travel the country type stuff. And then I didn't start actually vlogging and talking to you guys and connecting until 2010. That's kind of when I started. And I jumped in doing Vita, 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 Vita to get me started on vlogging. Um, my first videos you'll ever see in here that I did back in 2007 were just dumped onto YouTube. They were just my life casting videos. Make sure you're being nice and sharing. Just share. Share the Legos. So anyway, um, yeah. Uh, they were just like clips of me goofing around and lip syncing and stuff. They were from my life casting channel. So, uh, at what point do you think it will stop? I don't know. I don't know, but I think there's going to come a time when we're all going to look back on this uh, YouTube phenomenon of recording yourself and talking on the camera and exposing your whole life and everything. I think there's going to come a time when we're all going to look back on it and go, oh my God, do you remember when we used to do that? Oh, how embarrassing. Just like anything that happens that is a cultural phenomenon and we all get involved in and then we all... Uh, so, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. I think that's going to come, I think that's going to come, I think that's going to happen probably in about 10 years. I think we'll look back and think, remember when we used to, like, talk at ourselves on the camera and, like, post it for the world? Oh my gosh. No, I don't know. Who knows? The best thing about YouTube is, I've said before, the connections that I make with you people and the actual real-life friends that come of meeting people online it's amazing. There's nothing that is that comes close to connecting with somebody online because you connect at such a core level, I think, because you only are drawn to people you're really connected to. And it's different than the people you meet in your community around you in real life because you have a limited number of people. Online, you have anybody to pick and choose from in the world, and so you pick and zero in on the people that you resonate with the strongest. So I think that the connections are stronger with those you meet and connect with online. That's just my opinion. Um, and then the other part is I think that being on YouTube and sharing your life, it kind of helps you evolve in a way. You self-reflect and you get reflective, immediate reflection back from the people that are watching you. Um, and it, it you're always going to grow no matter what in life, but I think that being on YouTube, it, it, it makes you self-reflect and involve in, in a, a more rapid way, you know, in a different way than anything else could. I don't know. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> if you make videos, maybe you understand. I don't know. Okay. Um, what is the worst thing about being on YouTube? And most people say that they hate that they get, you know, probably. Mm, and I, maybe I have to agree, I haven't thankfully, you know, crossed my fingers, knock on wood, gotten a lot of hate. I haven't gotten a lot of hate, uh, but I have gotten inappropriate comments that make me really sad for humanity sometimes, like when perverts come in and are trying to be really uh, gross about children. I think that's when uh, it really affects me bad. I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so uh, that's the worst part is when, because when you're exposing your life and your children and your motherhood and all of that. Oh my gosh! It's <laughs> coughing me. And perverts come in and act like that. Sometimes it makes you go, gosh, should I really be sharing my life online? It makes you question it big time. So that's the worst part, I think. How many thumbnail options do you usually take? Now, when I watched, who did I watch do this? I think I watched. Um. I can't even think of her name right now, the little redhead, uh, Gabe and Jess, that YouTuber girl, I think, I don't watch her very often, but when, when I do, I watch this one, and she taught me something 
about thumbnails. I don't, how many thumbnail options do you usually take? I have never taken a thumbnail option. What I have done, the times that I feel like I need to pick out a thumbnail because all of my thumbnail options are like this, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> when, uh, when I feel like I need to choose my own thumbnail, I'll go in through my video and I'll try to pick one where I'm smiling or I look, you know, not retarded. <laughs> so that's all I do. I don't pose afterwards. And she said something like, YouTubers usually like will take a couple seconds at the end of their video and pose so they can snapshot that and use it as their thumbnail. I learned something new. Maybe I'll try that now. <laughs> I've never tried that. That seems pretty smart. Hello. So I've never done it. I haven't done thumbnail options, but I will in the future. Um, YouTuber crush. I don't have a YouTuber crush. I don't have a YouTuber crush. Nope. Nope. Um, honestly, I really don't. I don't. Um, yeah. Who's on your collab? You know who I really like, though? I really like um, Gradual Report. He makes me laugh. Now, if I do have a crush, maybe that's it, because he's handsome, he's tall. I met him in person with the Fiesta Movement. I thought he was handsome. And, um, and he's funny. So, I okay. My camera cut out, <laughs> and I couldn't finish recording right then. I had to stop and go for a bike ride and so my hair is even more messy than it was and my video is so unstable I'm thinking about putting up let me close this out here putting a stabilizer on it but I hate the stabilizer on YouTube because it like makes your face melt I don't know <laughs> but anyway I cut layers into my hair um, today I cut like little bangs like all the way layers on both sides and the layers go all the way down um, Anyway, so I'm working with those, and it's really, it's making my natural curl go bling <laughs> if I ever were to cut my hair, <laughs> ever, my hair, my natural curl would just be like, wow, I would be like uh, Diana Ross or something. So I want to finish this YouTuber tag as fast as possible, and so let me get the questions up here. All right, here we are. I left off on my YouTuber crush, so I'm going to hurry through the next questions. Um, Who's on your collab wish list? Now, I haven't really thought about that too much. I have already, um, co I haven't made videos where I'm in the same video with people yet so much at all, really. Um, I've done it once with Frowny Brownie, but we didn't collab. It was like she was in my vlog, okay? So, okay, we didn't collab. But I've, I've had a collab channel with just about everyone who I'd want to be in a collab with. When I made the Crunchy Life, I collab did collaboration channel videos with everyone that I liked in the Crunchy community that at that time. And when I did uh, my Pagan collab channels, I was with all the people who I had liked at that time. So I think I've done yeah, but as far as like being in the same video with somebody, I want to do it with everyone that I'm friends with on YouTube. If I'm friends with you on YouTube and we talk, I want to do a collab with you. I mean, come on. That's what you got to do. It's fun. So that's who is on my wish list. Everybody who I'm friends with, like, yeah, who make videos. Okay, um, next question. What are you wearing on your bottom half? <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, YouTubers are famously known for you know, um, wearing a fancy top up front, up top, having everything done from the waist up, and then they might be in boxer shorts or nothing, <laughs> you know. Um, but I am generally always wearing, I'm usually always wearing a dress. Nine times out of ten, you can pretty much guarantee that I'm wearing a dress. So I am definitely wearing a dress all the way down. So that's what I'm wearing. Oh, and uh, what are these called? These shoes? What do they wear, those shoes? Yeah, anyway, um, okay, how long, next question, how long until you actually click record when you're about to record a video? Now, uh, again, for YouTubers who make videos, you, um, a lot of people generally do, like, practice takes, and they, you know, will run the stuff, or they will hit record and, like, fix their hair and do their makeup and position themselves and check the lighting and do-do-do-do. And I don't do 
any of that. <laughs> I don't. I swear. Um, the most I do is I will put on my like um, my what is this? I'm pointing at something. Um, my photo booth on my computer, and I'll check my you know my lighting, make sure that it's okay, and I will check everything and make sure everything's not crazy. I mean, you know, it is crazy, but you know, I try to make sure there's no lipstick on my teeth or something like that. Um, maybe 30 seconds max tops. And then um, I make sure there's nothing incriminating in my background, <laughs> like, you know, addresses, names, stuff. And then and then I hit the play button. And I don't need to rehearse or prepare or loosen my mouth or get comfortable or run the lines or anything. I don't have lines. Um, just because I'm really comfortable doing it. And I think the reason why I'm really comfortable doing it is because I've mentioned before that I kind of came into YouTube in the back door, meaning um, I feel like like YouTube's like pre-recorded stuff, right? You can pre-record it, you can do it over and over again, you can edit it, you can totally take out all your mistakes, whatever, you can practice. And, uh, you know, I, my online video career started out with life casting and so I would just have a camera rolling 24 7 almost a lot you know um, and there was no practicing it was live it was real time there was no editing I was with a live chat audience right you know right there um, they saw everything I would get up walk away come back you know there was no recording um, and then that's what I did for the first few years and then I came to YouTube so I kind of got comfortable with the camera really fast that way, and coming to YouTube and editing and having pre-recorded stuff, it was just kind of like, whoa, you know, you can you can edit out all the awkward stuff. I don't know, it's weird. So I don't do that, and I've all, I'm also a really big improv person, and all of my performance and all of my music and all of my everything I've ever done creatively, improv has always been where it's at for me. Um, I do my best work on the fly, <laughs> the first time around, usually. Um, so yeah, so that's that. I don't really take a lot of time, maybe 30 seconds until I hit record. Next question, how do you feel about the YouTube community and culture? I love the YouTube community and culture. I really do. I think that it's, it's, a, it's, it's amazing. It's awesome. The YouTube community as a whole is one big thing. It's just YouTube, boom right? But within YouTube, just like within life, you have m millions of other sub-communities, okay? And for example, I'll list a bunch that like I'm a part of, okay? So you've got, um, well, I'm not a part of the beauty one or the style one, but you've got like the beauty community of makeup and hair and all that stuff. And then you've got like the style and the interior design and the organization communities, of, you know, a bunch of, and then you've got, um, the vague, the vegan, vegetarian, yoga community, and you've got the spiritual, new age, enlightenment community, and then you've got the mommy community here, and then you've got like the long hair community for people who have and are obsessed with really long hair, and then you've got, um, what other communities are there? There's all kind. there's a community for everything on here, you know, for for everything, for geocachers, for gardeners, for you name it, man. There's a community for it, fetish community, whatever. <laughs> um, so within those communities, it's really awesome because you just, it's a global community within any genre you want. It's awesome. How can it not be awesome? I love it. Okay, what's your secret to a successful YouTube channel? And this is the last question. Well, second to the last, whatever. Um. And I don't know if I have a secret because I don't know, I mean, my channel's small in comparison to what, you know, channels that are successful are. My channel is quite small right now. And, of course, we all want it to grow. I want mine to grow, obviously. Um, we all view success differently, though. Um, I think that, but there's a general consensus of what a successful channel is. I mean, a lot of views, a lot of subscribers, maybe you're able to make a a uh, fairly okay, you know, supplemental income off of it. Um, what else? Yeah, and I guess when you look at all the people that are successful in that way, um, the things, the running theme through all of their stuff is good lighting, 
good sound, good camera. Um, all three of those I don't think I'm up and up with right now. Uh, decent editing skills, not a must, but definitely a plus. And I think there's two key uh, things beyond the technical that I'm going to mention here, right here. And this is my opinion, my opinion. But um, I think, I think to be successful, you got to be real. You got to be you. And I could be wrong because there are some successful people that I think are just phony baloney mofos. Okay, but that, yeah. But I think if you're really just you, you're you, man. And and. <sighs> You can't pull one over on the YouTube community. You just can't. If you come across as fake, people are going to call you out. And I think people who are fake uh, or, or don't present their real face, they get a lot more hate because they're attracting. I was talking to somebody about this on YouTube recently, Katsa Yoga. She was talking about being more real. And I'm noticing a trend with a lot of people that they're starting to, like, shed this mask of who they thought that they should present themselves to be on YouTube. This, like, oh, I'm a yogi, so I should be an act enlightened. No, bullshit. You should be who you are. If that's a cusser, if that's a swearer, if that's a, you know, a jokester, whatever. You need to just be who you are because when you present this false persona, you're putting out a vibe. It's a false vibe. So you're going to attract incompatible energy to you. And when you're inconsistent, when your core being and the real you is not consistent with the people you're attracting, you're going to get hate. That's what I think. This is my philosophy. My phone's ringing, and I'm not going to answer it because I'm not done with this video. I'm almost done. So, but anyway, um, so that's the number one thing. I think you should be real. You should be yourself. Don't be scripted. Don't be trying to think like, oh, I should just be a certain way. <sighs> no, you just need to be yourself because otherwise you come across as phony, stiff, annoying, you know, and it comes across on camera a lot when you're not being real. So, um, or nervous, you know. And the second thing, and I'm going to close with this, that I think is really important, at least to me, stop ringing. I'm not going to get you right now. Just hold on. Um, the thing I think is really important is, and I've noticed this, some semi-successful YouTube channels, um, are bad at this, the, the girls, the usually girls, but guys do it too, um, but mostly, when you look at a really successful YouTube channel, they don't sit there and stare at themselves <laughs> in the camera, they don't stare at themselves in the viewfinder, they don't, and, um, you know, a lot of people do, a lot of people that I love to watch do this, and a lot of people that are kind of successful do this, but generally the really successful people they look at the audience this i'm looking like right now i'm looking at you right i'm looking i'm looking at you and that's where you should and this is a personal pet peeve of mine to the nine it's like my biggest youtube pet peeve of tubers is like i don't want to watch somebody staring at themselves in the viewfinder always talking and just looking at themselves and and doing a whole video just like this, just looking at themselves in the freaking screen. It's like, dude, stop it. <laughs> and literally, it's so annoying to me that I have to, if somebody's like that and I really want to hear what their video is about, I will freaking turn off the video. They really want to get a hold of me, don't they? I will, I will close the video out and just listen to the audio because I get so distracted looking at somebody looking at themselves in their own viewfinder that I can't even hear what they're talking about because I'm like, dude, stop looking at yourself. Stop. Stop. Stop it. You look fine. Stop it. <laughs> I get so annoyed. And it's such a bad thing. I think it's the most unprofessional thing. It makes you look so insecure. It really does. It makes it makes somebody look very insecure. Um, yeah. Dude, what do you want? I'm going to go, who do you tag? Um, you, do this. I'm going to go answer this incessant phone call. Okay, bye. We're still recording. You're supposed to stop recording.